Hello, I am Alarco, and today I will be doing a tutorial showing you how to create this sort of floor, which I used in my JD Hype and my Jom Shash Hydro intro. So you can see I like be going off the lighting. Also, um, the important thing. So I'll be teaching you how to get it to displace with the music. So without further ado, just open up a new Blender window and get started. So I'm just going to start off by um, selecting everything, deleting it. I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to scale it up by 10. I'm going to hit tab, go into edit mode, W, subdivide. I'm going to open up this menu. You might have a plus down here. So I'm going to just set the number all the way to 10. I'm going to subdivide again. This time I'm not going to go to 10, but I'm just going to get some subdivisions in. All right. And this, I'm just going to call the like floor it doesn't really matter what you call it as long as you know what it is because that's the important part now i'm going to go to modifiers i'm going to hit add and i'm going to hit displace and i'm going to add texture um i'm going to go to texture tab the checkered thing i'm going to set to clouds right so i'm going to just play with this a bit get the size something that i like all right i think this is good don't worry about it being like really strong like it is right now could always just scale it down on the Z or um, we'll be able to change the strength later anyway so I'm just gonna play with the texture a bit basically get some sort of distortion that you like and that you can work with right um, and don't worry about too much about how high it is like play like just scale with this like um, scale on the Z axis just like this don't actually scale it like don't left click just sort to see which depth you like and then once you have that all done, what you want to do is you want to add a modifier, triangulate, because you want to triangulate this thing. The important thing is that you change quad method to be fixed, okay? I'm going to make sure I, I'm going to just toggle the um, viewport on displacement, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to hit shift D, I'm going to right click, yes, right, I'm going to, so I don't like move it, I'm going to hit M2, move it to layer 2, and then I'm going to add another modifier to this stack to this new thing, this is gonna be our wireframe. So I'm just gonna call this wireframe. Then I'm gonna to go to, sorry, no materials, I'm gonna go add a modifier, add a wireframe modifier. I'm gonna lower the thickness to be like 0 0.01 or 0.002. Now I'll go like 00, there we go. But just, what did I press? Um, Sorry. Just find a thickness that you're comfortable with. Now would be a good sorry, um now would be a good time to save. So I'm gonna go to tutorials, Figma Bob, I'm gonna save this as an example. So now you have so I'm gonna like make this available for download. So you'll have an example. As an example. So now if you go if I um well what you'll see here is that if I toggle the displacement modifier on both on um both of the things, they match up. And so I'm Blender Render right now. I'm going to go to Cycles Render. Um, and then if I, like, let's say I add the light, you see that the scene is not going too badly, right? There's a lot of fireflies and all, but that's just samples. So I'm going to, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the wireframe. And I'm going to add the particles. So to do that, I'm just going to go first to Alt 1 layer, layer Alt 1. Uh, and I'm going to add the icosphere with one subdivision. And this is what I used for the orbs in this like if we go here see this this the orb or the particle thing All right so now i'm going to go back here i'm just going to call this orb and then yeah so now we have all our floor orb and wireframe named so now i'm going to go back to layer one i'm going to see that i have here 2025 vertices right up there that's going to be important because i'm going to go to the particle system tab the, like the four sort of flares Add new, I'm going to call this orbs. I'm going to make sure it starts and ends on frame one. I'm going to make sure that it emits from the vertices. I'm going to make sure it's not random. And then I'm going to go to physics. No physics, I don't want any physics at all because that way it won't be falling. And then I'm going to set the number to equal to the amount of vertices. So it's 2025 for me. And it's going to be different for depending on how many subdivisions you do. So I'm going to um, also in physics, you want to play around with the size a bit. You don't want to do that yet because you want to first go to render object select orb 
and then here you can play around with the size. So what I would do here is I would also make sure that the wireframe is visible. I'm gonna turn off the displacement on this for now, right? So that way I can see the size of it relative to the wireframe. So this is where 0.002 wasn't too small. Really, this is all just personal preference at this point. But now I'm gonna hide the wireframe again. So now you see our particle system. The important thing is that you have the particle system um, at the end. That way it displaces before it adds the particles. Right? I'm just turning it on and off with the eye symbol in case you haven't picked that up already. But yeah, so now we have most of it done. Now we need to animate the distortion to go with the music. So I'm gonna open up a new window, go to the video sequence editor, and I'm going to add a sound. I don't know what sound I'm gonna use. Here I have some audio. I'll use this audio. Never mind, it's empty audio, sorry. <laughs> I tried this before already and I like completely screwed up the audio. I'm doing this a second time. Um here. Let me just find something. Blender intros. Here, I know what to use. Da, there's no audio there. Whoops, it's an audio list thing. Ugh. What did I okay, here we go. Um here's a song I'll use. I'm not gonna distribute it for legal reasons. I'm not gonna like put it into the actual blend file. So I'm gonna delete this later. But you can keep it in. Alright. Um, yeah, so let the bass kick. Okay, I like this. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to hit N to open up the properties window or tab. I'm gonna set the volume, I'm gonna lower this. I'm gonna lower this like 0.25. No, because what's gonna happen is that we're gonna be bake, we're gonna um, be exporting this audio. So I'm gonna go audio.mp3 s632. Um, honestly, I just make this way more than it should be. One second. Like I make this too way too more accurate and much bigger bit rate than I really need to. But I'm like okay, whatever. So I'm gonna hit mix down once you edit the like file and all. It doesn't really matter what you use because Blender is gonna be reading it and I'm pretty sure that Blender would be able to read whatever it can export. But now that's done, I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna open up the window to the side. I don't know why, I just prefer having curves. Because now we're gonna go to the F, the graph editor. Um, F curves, we're gonna be changing. We're gonna be baking stuff, right? That's why I just said F, okay. Anyway, now we go to the modifier. You, hit, you see there's strength. Make sure you're on frame one or the starting frame. Then you wanna hit I over strength to add a keyframe. Then you want to go key, bake sound to F curves, select your audio, and let the bass kick. So you see here, my particles also died. Um, that's a mistake on my part. I forgot to increase the lifetime to be high. So I'm going to set the lifetime to be like a thousand. As long as it's bigger than your animation, they'll stay forever. That's kind of my bad. Let the bass kick. set the volume to be 0.25 just so that I don't have like too much distortion. But now um, I'm gonna go back here for a second. These distortions, they um... So I'm gonna be doing that next. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna change the texture because I'm not happy with this. I'm gonna let the bass kick. Not too small. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Honestly, that's just personal preference. I'm just changing it now because I'm like, hey, I don't like that. But yeah, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhide this thing. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this displacement. I'm gonna hit I. Oh, whoops, I forgot to go to frame one. I'm gonna delete that keyframe. Hit I, then hit, um, I'm gonna go key, bake sound to F curves, bake the audio. And just like that, you see we have Let the bass kick. these two things they are distorting. So now, final thing we're going to do, we're going to just add a empty. I'm going to make sure I'm on layer one, because I just want to do it one at a time. So I'm going to go add empty. I'm going to add an arrow. It doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't show up in the render. And we're going to use this as our texture coordinate so that the displacement isn't just going up and down. 
that isn't just going up and down, it's also moving a bit. So texture coordinate, we're gonna change this to object. And I'm just gonna hit this and select the empty. You could also just go empty because I mean, unless you have like a lot of objects in your scene, right? And now we're just gonna go to um, the wireframe and I'm going to do the exact same thing. It probably would have been smarter to do the entire displacement first and then duplicate it so you didn't have to redo all this, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna fry this tutorial anyway. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the empty, I'm gonna hit I for location. I wanna keyframe just location. Okay, I mean, I, I mean you can keyframe more, but, all, but only location is important. So I see I have 250 frames. I want to move maybe like once every, like um, one unit every 100 frames. So what I'm gonna do, I forgot how to do this the efficient way. So I'm just gonna hit GX 2.5 moving on x 2.5 like spaces so i'm going to hit i for location and now if you see here in the graph editor the graph is curved which means that the changing of the displacement isn't going to be constant so if you want it to be constant you just have to hit t as in like technology or something i don't know why i'm saying that but then you just go to linear interpolation and you see now it's constant also my wireframe is messed up oh i um selected the wrong object Whoops, okay. But now it lines up, and if I play it. Let the bass kick. Okay, it's moving way too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the um the like the end of the X movement. I'm gonna move it down along the Y by negative one. So now let the bass kick. I don't know, that's still a lot of movement, so I'm gonna move it down another. Let the bass kick. Yeah, that's what I like, you know, slow gradual movement, but you can still tell it's moving. Okay, I'm, I'm still not happy with this texture, and I don't even know why. But I'm just gonna increase the size to like one, set to like hard. Nah, I'm gonna set the soft. The only thing, the only other thing I don't need to do is add lighting. So I'll like add a sun lamp. Really, my only lighting was legit just a sun lamp. Why is this not rotating? Oh, I'm hitting scale, not rotate. Sorry, I legit just added a sun lamp and like played with the size. Um, I just set the size to be something pretty small, like 0.05. And then what I did to get the changing colors, I didn't even do like any compositing, despite like usually going over on compositing. I legit just keyframed the color. But what you can do if you want, if you don't feel like compositing, you can just change color here and animate this instead. All right, so I'm gonna get my nice, I'm gonna go for like an orange color, cause I like that color. And then um, for the materials of the actual thing, I legit just like, the only thing to know is that for the wireframe, I made it um, a rough glossy. So glossy, rough, like if you want to be like exactly the same as what I had, All right? Something like that looks cool. Let the bass kick. I don't know, if you really want to, you go like O1, and you get a nice, really reflective glossy. And then, basically, everything else was diffused. Um, something I did do is I did have the, um, I believe the floor I had was, I had it as a bit darker than the rest. Yeah, look, the floor was darker than the Y. No, the wireframe. I mean, than the orbs. Oh, no, I had the wireframe as a diffuse. Whatever. But yeah, just, you can play around with materials. I, I'm just gonna make the floor a bit darker here to stand out. And I think that's good. Oh yeah, I think I did end the fuse. Yeah, I did end the fuse and the diffuse. So I'm gonna use a diffuse. I'm gonna make the wireframe white and I'm gonna make these orbs pretty dark. Oh yeah, I forgot to change the color of the orb. I have to go to orb. I'm gonna like make this darkish. Um, too dark. I don't know, the orbs are also a bit big. But whatever, yeah, you get the point. And then I just add like a camera. So I'll do that. Lock camera to view. I set the, I just animated it, like just made it to go through a straight path. I set the render to be just the two layers. Now I can like go samples, set it to like 256. And I hit F12 and render it.